Continuities and perpetuities, they sound like they make sense when you just study the theory. But sometimes when we're looking at these in-depth questions that are mixing a bunch of different sorts of annuities and a bunch of different sorts of perpetuities, we get hella confused. So what we're going to do now is we're going to break down a question that mixes different sorts of annuities and perpetuities in real time. We're going to be looking at a set of different cash flows and then another set of different cash flows that we're letting rest over a period of time to find the future value. Let us look at this question in which we need to find a future value of a set of cash flows. All right, so assume you are to receive a 20 year annuity with annual payments of $50. The first payment will be received at the end of year one and the last payment will be received at the end of year 20. You will invest each payment in an account that pays 10%. What will be the value in your account at the end of year 30? Now we got a whole lot of content and we want to be able to identify the key variables and then place them onto a timeline. There's really no other way to go about it. When we're dealing with larger annuity questions or TVM questions, really, we need to be able to use a timeline. This is a super important skill and I'll definitely stand by that. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to be able to identify, okay, so what are we looking at here? Here we see that we are, to, we are going to receive a 20 year annuity with annual payments of $50. We know that the first payment will be at the end of year one. What does this mean for us? Okay. I just want to make that super clear. If we're telling you that you are seeing a annuity that you will be receiving at the end of year one, this means that we're dealing with a normal annuity. By the way, a normal annuity means that payments are done at the end of the period or at the beginning of the next period. Okay. Whereas a, a annuity due deals with payments that are done at the beginning of the period. So just like that, you know exactly what formula to use. So that's a clear indicator that we're dealing with a normal annuity. All right. With that being said, you could put in the formula that we're going to use later and we'll be able to make sense of it. Okay. So let's look at the rest of the question and the last payment will be received at the end of year 20. So just like that, we know exactly what our timestamp is like. All right. So at the end of year 20, you will invest each payment in an account that pays 10%. So this account pays 10% and we want to know what will be the value in year 30? What will be the value in year 30? So just like that, it is very clear to us that we are looking at the future value. We want to be able to seek the future value of our investment at year 30. So we are seeking the future value. Alrighty. One last thing that I want to be able to discuss is that this idea of a last payment. Okay. So the last payment is done at the end of year 20. Well, what happens after that? What is happening to the account? And this kind of deals with the logic and intuition of what having money in the account really means. So in this case, we're saying that contributions are being done for every period until the end of year 20. But after that, the money doesn't just go away. The money is actually still in the account and it's still making 10% per year. However, there are just no more contributions. So that's just an idea that you want to be able to understand. And if you do, good for you. If you don't, well, now you know. So please remember that that's the last payment at the end 20. All right. So let's put this on to a timeline and let's try to group these different scenarios within our timeline. So if we begin right here, we could have a big timeline like this. And for the sake of the example, we're going to zoom in a little bit. Okay. So we definitely have T zero. We have T one. And then we're going to skip a few years to T19 for the sake of spacing. Then we have T20. We have T0 all the way to T20. That's one consideration. But we know that our whole timeline is going all the way to year 30. So we should definitely set that up within our timeline. So we have T equals 21. We have T equals 22. Then we're going to skip a few years to T equals 29 and then T equals 30. So let's use a different color. What I want you guys to be able to understand is that we have two different sets of formulas that we need to use in this question. As we said, we have an annuity with regular payments. Okay. So we have a normal annuity 
all the way to the end of year 20. Okay? But then after that, we're just letting our money compound interest through time to year 30. So what does this really mean? Let's just put it onto our timeline. So that means that we have a payment at T1, payment at T19, in between, obviously, and then a payment at T20, all in the value of $50. All right, so if we have contributions at the end of T1 all the way at the end of T20. So we have our first little scenario. So we could group it as being just like this. So we have our first scenario. Let's call it A. Then we have a following scenario. Let's use blue, okay? So we know that at the end of t uh, t at the end of year 20, at the end of T20, we have our last contribution. After that, we're going to be able to find, okay? We're going to use that future value and we're going to compound that for 10 years with our discount, with our interest rate. So, right here, we could use that all the way to T30, in which we're gonna just essentially compound interest for 10 periods at 10%, I believe. Let us make sure, yeah, at 10% and so forth. So we have our two scenarios. And just like that, we have a better sense of what we're doing. Now, what I want you guys to be able to understand is that once we find our future value at T20 for our annuity, we're going to be able to use that amount and compound that amount by 10% every period until period T30, okay? So, of course, right now we have FB30 and we have FB20 right here, Alrighty. So, just two little considerations to do. So, with that being said, now we're able to go find what we need. So, let's find a right here. So our future value, okay? We know that the future value of a normal annuity, all right, a ordinary uh, annuity is equal to payment, little bracket right here, put it like this, okay, plus k to the power of n minus one, so that's how we find the future value of an ordinary of a ordinary annuity or just a normal annuity. So let's just put all of our variables onto this. And obviously we, we know them. We know that our payment is $50. We know that our K is 10%. And we know that our N is 20, right? We are looking at 20 periods because we're going all the way to the end of T20. And then it becomes really, really easy for us to find our future value. Such that our future value at period 20 is equal to 50 1 plus 0.1 to the power of 20 minus 1 over 1.1, 1 .1, uh, 0.1. And just like that, you are able to find the future value at period 20. And in this case, it's equal to 2,863, 863, yes, 0.75. So now we have, as I mentioned, our future value at period 20. We want to be able to take that amount and compound 10% per period until T, uh, until T30. And we want to be able to find a future value at, at period 30. That's all that we're really doing, right? That's what we said at the very beginning. So now let us use a different color. And because we're only seeking a future value, and because there are no contributions, it becomes really, really simple. Remember the video in which we looked at future value, and we just had to use our value that we had and do that times 1, 1 plus k to the power of n. Well, in this case, that's exactly what we're going to do. So we have b in which our future value at 30 is going to be equal to our future value 20, 1 plus k to the power of n. In this case, if we want to zoom in to make it look a little bit nicer, we have a future value at 30. So we take our 2,863.75 times 1.1 to the power of 10, such that our future value at 30 is equal to 7,427.83.
And just like that, as you can see, same answer. So with that, we were able to break down a very complex annuity question, and that's one that we may feel confused or not too ready to do on an exam. But as you can see, it's really simple. What you need to be able to do is break down the question into key variables, and then kind of see how they relate to the different formulas we have. In this case, it was very clear to us that we're dealing with a normal annuity. We have contributions, we know our payment, and we also know our K, as well as our period. So like that, we were able to define our normal annuity at period 20. Then once that was done, all that we had to do is realize, well, hey, there are no more installments. What we need to do now is just compound our future value at T20 at period 20 for 10 periods to find our future value at period 30. What I want you guys to really understand is that at the end of it all, we just need to break down these problems into kind of bite-sized portions that are clear and kind of relatable to our different functions. And that's exactly what we did.